Welcome back to Old School Sports and our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Pittsburgh Pirates. We're at the start of 2039, uh, finishing up the off season and get ready, getting ready for spring training in this episode. I've really made just one free agent signing this off season. Um, the excellent starting pitcher Bobby Gonzalez, who for some reason was willing to sign a one-year deal. So very happy to have him on board. Uh, we've also added a couple players through trades, a couple players through the Rule 5 draft. And you can see we've just made a bunch of um, minor league offers to a bunch of people to kind of uh, start building out our farm system. Thinking about the team for next year and looking at the proposed lineup from our manager Vasquez, um, it may be time to move on from Jordan Owens, who was our starting center fielder last year. We had brought Ignacio Carbajal on board through a trade with the Nationals. Looking at him more as a excellent defensive utility outfielder, um, but right now Vasquez wants to start Carbajal. And Carbajal is a left-handed bat, which you can see we don't have a ton of on the roster right now. So Owens is the backup at this point. Um, and he's not going to be playing all that much. And you can see we've got six outfielders potentially on the roster right now. Owens and Andres Mendez, who's the number 42 prospect in baseball, got a brief cup of coffee with us at the end of last season are the two outfielders that aren't going to be starting every day. So I'm thinking that maybe we move on from Owens and try to bring on another infielder. Um, we're going to try to keep shortstop Tony Fonseca, even though he wants out because we are a losing team. Again, another one of the rare left-handed bats that we have, and also still an excellent defensive catcher who's generally going to be out there every day for us. So we want to keep him around. Uh, we picked up Jim Kager through a trade with Baltimore and Pat Peaches through a trade with the White Sox to kind of play at second and third. But you can actually see right now Peaches is slotted in at first base because last year uh, one of our Rule 5 guys, Victor Gomez, who hit really well for us, is just so miserable defensively that the manager doesn't want to play him regularly. We're not going to be able to add a star infielder. Khalil Watson is still out there, still looking for like $10 million. He's 35 years old. He's wrecked physically. He's respectable defensively. Certainly appears to me to be more of a third baseman with his ratings than a second baseman or a shortstop. Um, but we basically use up all the money we have to bring him on board. So if we can find a good player who can play second base, can play third base for Jordan Owens, I think at this point the theory for next season is to just have at least five major league quality infielders on this team who can hit a little, have some defensive versatility and are respectable defensively, and let uh, let the manager mix and match among them. Um, and at least then if we have some injuries, we've got legitimate major league players who can help us out. So we're going to see if maybe there's something that fits the bill that we can get if we um, put uh, Jordan Owens out onto the trade market. And I'm potentially pulling a bit of an audible here on what I was saying that I was thinking about doing. Um, Although our manager right now prefers Carbajal over Owens, Owens did have a really nice year for us last year. I don't love the low work ethic, but he still led the team with a 2.6 war. He's very good defensively, and importantly, he's still on a minimum contract going to be arbitration eligible next year. It's possible if he doesn't start most of this year that that number will be a little lower. But I think I want both of those guys on our team um, for next year. And then Carbajal is obviously going to be a free agent after this coming season. So I'm actually thinking about trading away Victor Gomez, who was our Rule 5 acquisition, who 
led the team with 31 homers and 94 runs driven in last year, but still put up just a .3 war because he can only play first base, and he's not that good at playing first base. And right now, he's not even in our starting lineup. Um, doesn't have a ton of speed. He certainly has a nice bat, especially that power. But he's not in the starting lineup right now. And if we package him, who certainly has value with catcher Manny Gibson, who's not a prospect, starting pitcher Jose Almanza, who's a very marginal prospect. I mean, he is a former major leaguer who's just in our farm system for depth. And then second baseman Luis Trosse, not a prospect. We can get Dave Urquiza from Kansas City. And uh, frequent commenter and regular viewer Tom Lehman will like this because uh, it is adding that captain personality to the team that he suggested we should try to get this off season. And Urquiza is another guy who is a very capable major league second baseman and third baseman, can play shortstop in a pinch, can be close, hopefully, to a league average hitter. He's durable, only 29 years old. He's got two years signed left on his contract, um, and we can get the Royals to keep 40% of it. And with that contract, um, the Rangers are already retaining 30% of it from when uh, I was the Royals GM and picked him up a few seasons ago. So really only going to be responsible for 30% of that contract for the next two years. But he gives us a good personality, some leadership in the clubhouse, a durable player, and just another professional infielder that's actually a major league ball player. Um, I know it's kind of weird maybe to be bringing on a 29-year-old and to be giving up a 24, soon to be 25-year-old who just hit 31 home runs for you when you brought him up from high A ball to the majors. But with the lack of speed, the bad eye, the strikeouts, he did have 211 strikeouts, the fact that he doesn't really have a defensive position, um, I don't see him being a player that we're going to be building around for the long term. Granted, we're only going to have Urquiza for two years, but I think the point is to get this team better this season and close to 500, start making it a place that some legitimate free agents might actually want to come to. And given that when you look at our um, proposed lineup right now, Gomez as well as Mendez, who's a similar player, you know, soon to be 25 years old, not very good defensively, but at least he can play left and right in addition to first base. Mendez does not have the same power, but I think he's a little bit better of a player. He's still ranked the number 42 prospect in baseball. And he's also a player that, you know, we could send down in AAA if we need to this year to make sure he gets regular playing time if we do bring back Owens. Um, so it's tough to give up the guy who had a great rookie season for you, finished second in the Rookie of the Year voting, over 30 homers, almost 100 ribbies. But with those 211 strikeouts, no speed, in horrible defense, even in that excellent rookie season, he added up to just being a little bit above a replacement level player for us. And it doesn't look like he's going to be in the starting lineup next year. I think we're going to bring on Urquiza, give us a good personality. Like I said, another professional major league player. Popularity is only fair, so not a big deal. But, um, I feel like it's a good return for Gomez for picking him up in the Rule 5 draft. We got a really nice season out of him last year, and now we're getting a proven major leaguer on a reasonable contract with the amount that we're going to have to pay who can help us for the next couple years, and hopefully with Kager and Peaches and Fonseca and last year's all-star Tony Cook 
ensure that we've got five legitimate major league players to, to kind of man those four spots in the infield. So we are going to go ahead and complete that trade. Um, definitely one that can be second guessed and that's fine. That's the whole point of this to hear different perspectives of people. Um, does seem like the uh, leadership of Urquiza is good. Excited that a good captain's coming on board. So uh, thank you, Tom, for uh, suggesting that I make sure to do that. Um, I think we had like so many captains in Kansas City at times that I wasn't even really thinking about it, but that was a good point. Glad to have him on board. And uh, we'll have to follow what Gomez does over the course of his career. Um, don't love the fact that he was a left-handed bat that we got rid of because as I was talking about, that's um, an area for the team that I think we could do a little better with. But um, it didn't seem like he was going to be playing every day anyways, in part due to his defensive limitations. And uh, felt that, um, you know, with Mendez, um, <clears throat> we just had two real similar young players who weren't going to be getting a ton of playing time um and mendez potentially has almost the same home run power with better contact better gap power better eye better avoid strikeouts if everything works out and although they're also they're both miserable defensive players at least mendez you can put him out in left and right field in addition to playing him at first base if you have to. So I think he's just a versatile, a more versatile, better player. Although, honestly, I am a bit surprised that he's listed as the number 42 prospect in baseball. And I've got another trade that I think I'm going to make now, given that um, we've brought on board now... Um, some extra depth with Urquiza. Danny Cantu, who is a guy that we picked up in the Rule 5 draft. An interesting player, you know, 25 years old, um, hasn't been in the majors yet, but a nice versatile glove and a kind of interesting-ish bat. You know, he's not going to be a major league average hitter, but I think he's going to hit enough to justify being on a roster with that glove. But in our case, I think we're going to go with most likely David Gallegos is our sixth infielder. Um, a little bit more of a bat, not as good defensively, but another left-handed bat that we're very short on um, is the key. So we're going to see what we can possibly maybe get for Can too, because if we don't keep him on the 26-man roster, we're going to have to uh, just send him back to the Red Sox. And there's actually pretty good demand for him out there. Kind of a funny one that I just saw was um, our old friend Dan Keough from the uh, Royals, who you can see uh, put up a 420 ERA with Tampa Bay in 2037 and then a 561 ERA in 2038 with the White Sox. Uh, did save 20 games with the White Sox last year, but gave up 18 home runs and 77 innings. So uh, his lack of movement and his ability to not throw incredibly hard um, definitely has uh, sent his career off in a, a very mediocre direction. So he probably won't be the guy that we're going for, but going to see if there may be someone, um, hopefully a little bit younger, with some minor league options. Um, that we can potentially bring on. We're probably not going to get full value back for Can too, but given that we're just going to send him back anyways, um, maybe there's someone out there that we can pick up who we can stash in AAA for a season or two. And I think we have found a trade for Can too. Again, I really like him, um, but I don't think he's going to make the team. And if he doesn't make the 26-man roster, we have to send him back. We can get Oscar Gomez from the Cubs for him. Gomez looks like a brilliant defensive player, obviously. He's got some speed. He knows how to bunt. The issue is obviously his bat. Um, he's durable. He can play every day. He hit 231 with a one war for the Cubs last year. But he does still have three minor league options year left, I'm sure 
option years left. I'm sure he won't like going down to AAA. But you look at his contact and his home run power and his avoid Ks, and our scout thinks that there's still some room for him to grow. He's never going to hit that much, but if he gets the contact up to close to major league average with that decent gap power, should be able to hit some doubles and triples with his speed. And um, with that glove, you know, is a utility infielder and a guy who, if you need a... Um, defensive replacement in the eighth and ninth inning or a guy who you need to kind of put out there every day at second or third or short for a period of time to fill in for somebody who's banged up with a you know 10 day two week kind of injury seems like there's some value there um, so I think we're going to make this trade for Gomez put Gomez down in triple a this year and try to see if we can uh Give him a little playing time at second base and third base to kind of um, diversify the areas where he can, you know, potentially fill in for us in the future. But I think this is a uh, decent trade for us for the long term, even though Gomez, I'm sure, isn't going to like going back to AAA. At least we're extracting a little value for Mr. Cantu. So you can see that bringing on Urquiza um, has used up a little bit of the money we had for free agents, not the end of the world. Um, selling season tickets at a decent rate this year. Expect uh, revenue per game this year to be up pretty significantly. If we can uh, really achieve that number, that would be excellent. Going to sell about 1,600 more season tickets than we did last season, even though the... Uh, price of season tickets a year ago is $12. We bumped it up to $13 now. So um, seems like things are going decently financially for the Pirates. Certainly not great, but decently. And um, I think that the team that we're putting on the field is going to be a better team. I mean, Peaches, Urquiza, and Kager, as we've talked about, are all professional Ball players, which is progress. Ishmael Gill is going to be a really nice backup catcher. Carbajal, the addition of him in center field, um, definitely gives us two professional center fielders defensively with him and Owens, and gives us some options for our weaker corner outfielders um, with some defensive substitutes. We're going to have Isaiah Hill likely the uh, number six prospect in baseball didn't do much at triple a at the end of last season but i think we're going to have him up on the roster so that'll be an addition and then having mendez up on the roster the entire year rather than just at the end of the season um will also at least give us some some new blood in the the day-to-day -day lineup Pitching, we haven't made as many changes this offseason. Quite honestly, it's really just the one. But it's a big change or a big, big addition. Bobby Gonzalez, you know, unfortunately, it's just a one year deal. But this guy is a proven solid major league pitcher. Um, I don't love him as a starter with the fourth and fifth pitches being both below average. But it looks like he's been pretty successful over the course of his career because that changeup is just so exceptional. Um, has certainly been a starter most of the last three years with Boston and until last season was an above average pitcher. I mean, still above average in terms of his war, but his uh, Sierra got higher and his BABIP was certainly the highest it's been since his rookie year last season. Um, definitely could see him ending up working out of the pen, but um, manager wants him to be the starter at this point. He's actually willing to sign an extension. I don't know. He wouldn't sign a more than one year deal with us, but he's actually willing to sign for about four million a year for the next four seasons. Um, left handed arm, who again, over the course of his major league career, has been an above average major league pitcher. I do think he's more of a bullpen arm than a starter. He wants to be in the starting rotation. Um, but we did not guarantee that to him when we brought him on board. Um, doesn't mean he won't be upset that he's not a starter, but we didn't promise him that. 
Um, he's going to want a promised role in the starting rotation with the extension, as you can see here. But if we can get him signed for a few more years at a reasonable-ish number, I think it's a move that we have to make. So we're going to offer Gonzalez a four-year extension, structured a little differently. Instead of the $4 million average he wanted, $3.7 million average annual value. And we're putting in a team option for the third season. Um, still kept him with a player option for the fourth. Um, I don't know what's wrong with this guy and why he's been willing to sign for so little given his track record. I do, like I said, I do feel like he's more of a reliever than a starter, which is why I don't want to guarantee him a promised role as a starter. But this contract, even if it ends up being a bad contract, is not so much money that we're not going to be able to get out of it if we need to, even as the Pirates. So I'm going to go ahead and at least offer this to him and see what he thinks. He's willing to think about it. Um... Again, I feel like there's got to be something wrong with Gonzalez that I'm just missing. Um, but I don't know what that is. He's an Iron Man, ground ball pitcher, so he shouldn't give up a ton of dingers. Like I said, I don't really view him as a starter because of that mediocre sinker and that horrible slider. But over the course of his major league career, he's been an above-average pitcher. And you look at his ratings, he's better against left-handed batters with that movement and that control than he is against lefty than he is against righties. So even if we had to make him a lefty specialist in the bullpen, I think he'd be pretty effective. But um, I don't really understand why a two-time All-Star, who's only 28 years old, may be willing to sign this contract with us. But I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. And I don't even know if what I just said is the right expression or not, but it seemed like it might fit. And Bobby Gonzalez has signed that extension. Uh, the fans have an amazing response. Got a three-point bump in fan interest, so that's positive. Probably will help us sell a few more tickets. Again, if you see what I'm missing with Bobby Gonzalez, would love if you share down below in the comments why I shouldn't have signed that guy. But to me, it seemed like a no-brainer, even for a team like the Pirates. And as we head into mid-January... Still got money to spend um, potentially on a, a one-year contract. You can see we don't have a lot for extensions now with the fact that we've got Kager on for next season now or Kiza for next season, a big arbitration number for Peaches that will probably decline. We've now got Gonzalez locked up, and you can see that a lot of our younger players are heading into slightly more expensive arbitration years. Um, particularly Tony Santana, who we've talked to about an extension, but he knows that uh, although he hasn't been great at the major league level yet, he's been pretty darn good with an average of a three war these first two seasons. And he's unfortunately looking for a 10-year deal at about $22 million a year. So I think unfortunately with him, we're just going to let him over the next couple of years play through some of those arbitration numbers, and then we'll have a decision to make with him down the line. Um, you know, it's conceivable that in three or four years, the budget for the Pirates is going to be bigger than it is today. I don't know how much bigger, but um, we don't have to, to make any decisions on that right now. But certainly would feel like if we could add a good pitcher on a one-year contract would be happy to do that and then honestly if we dump more money into scouting and development for this season and then even potentially put a wacky amount of inform a wacky amount of um, money set aside for the draft budget um, just so we can pick up you know one of those guys who drops to the third or fourth round because they've got a really unreasonable request Putting some extra money in the draft budget could allow us to sign one of those. So I don't hate the fact that 
we haven't spent a ton of money this offseason. I feel like we've definitely made the team better with the pitcher we brought on in Gonzalez, all of the everyday players that we've brought on through trades and the Rule 5 draft, and then also the youngsters that we're going to have coming up to the team. So um, I feel like we should definitely be better next season, but I still would like to add one more arm if I can. And looking at the list of available free agents, um, the pitching out there is getting a little bit thin. Um, Santiago Suarez, um, good closer, but looking for $17 million, don't want to go there. Would have considered on a one-year deal Manny Castro, uh, but he actually doesn't want to sign with us because of our uh, manager. You'll remember that was a common theme with our previous manager, um, at least with the case of Jan Vasquez. Um, there are many fewer players who really would have a poor relationship with him, but it turns out that Castro is one of those. Um, we'd basically be spending all of the money that we have left on him for a one-year deal, and given that he's 29, he probably doesn't even want to do a one-year deal. Um, so that one doesn't really work. Um, and then Al Pineda is kind of just a guy. Um, so I may look at the trade market, see if there's someone who wants to get out of the last year of a not so great contract with a reliever that maybe we can pick up for a decent price since we do have money to spend for this upcoming season. And looking at the trade block, there's a couple of players that I'm going to consider. Um, one is Rodolfo Morales. Um, I think he's miscast as a starting pitcher only three pitches and that change up is below average um he's been an average-ish kind of pitcher the last few years primarily as a starter but if you go back and look at his pitching stats from 2034 and 2035 when he used, was used much more frequently as a reliever his fit minus of 86 and 67 are the two best in his career and he's making a little less than five million dollars he's durable um He's an interesting one to bring on if we can bring him on at a reasonable rate. Similarly, Rich Gutierrez, um, maybe not quite as miscast as a starter um, in terms of his skill set, but he just doesn't have a ton of stamina. Making $6.3 million. Um, I think if I can get either of these pitchers for not all that much, those would be contracts to consider taking on for one season. Uh, the issue is really going to be exactly what their teams are looking for for them. Because I don't think I want to pay a ton in terms of prospects and players to, to bring either of them on board. But if, uh, if they're just looking to dump the contract, definitely something for us to think about. And the cost for Rich Gutierrez from the Mariners is pretty high, as you can see. You know, either better major league players or pretty good prospects. Um, so I don't think I want to do that just for a reliever. I think Morales, the cost may be a little less. I might just be talking my book right now, but... now nah, there's definitely more options with Morales. Uh, it still looks like it's all major league type players but maybe we can put something together you know you look at um gomez here only a two-star player but he is kind of really a versatile bench player for us um, can play first third left and right um, dh'd for us a lot last year wasn't all that productive with a 205 batting average although he did hit 20 home runs but he was also one of the few guys on our team who's got some speed Negative war last year. You know, I can't say he played incredibly well, but um, I do like his versatility as a guy off the bench. Um, do like his speed as a guy off the bench. Do like his durability. So would prefer not to give him up, even though he's kind of like the 12th or 13th man on the roster among our 13 position players. Um, I think that he can play a role for us this coming season. And we've got a deal together to bring on Morales to the team for next season. Um, I think he'll be a good addition to the bullpen. Um, 
I don't want to start him. I'm going to force him into a relief roll, but I think he's a nice right-handed arm for the bullpen. Milwaukee ended up keeping 70% of his contract. Obviously, I was talking about the fact that we do have money to we do have the ability to bring on some money, but by the same token, I'm going to get every penny I can out of the team that we're dealing with. Um, we have to trade first baseman Manny Navarez. Um, you know, looks like he could be an average-ish major league player. Don't love the fact that he's got a low work ethic. He's 23 years old, and he's only been in A ball, where he did hit 18 home runs last year, but certainly not a huge prospect. And then Angel or Angel Mayes, um, more decent prospect, not yet 20 years old. Certainly profiles as someone who could have a little pop at the major league level, um, but just doesn't really have a great defensive position. You know, he can play third. He's got the gun of an arm, um, but otherwise is not all that great. And then in the outfield, you know, he can play right with his arm, but not great range, not great error ratings. Best case scenario is he's kind of a corner outfielder, third baseman with a little bit above average bat, but I don't think he's a big time prospect. So, we are going to make the trade to bring on Morales to the Major League team, give up Navarez and Mays. And the preseason is going to begin tomorrow. Um, you can see we've still got about $14 million for free agents. For the time being, we are actually going to up our scouting and development budgets a little bit more. Um, I don't think that these are necessarily sustainable levels for the long term, particularly when we're going to want to be spending money at the major leagues to be more competitive. But um, right now, I'm um, willing to kind of limit our flexibility at the major league level a little bit um, and just invest more in scouting and development. I talked a lot in our Royals series, and I even actually talked about it a little bit in the tutorial that I made at the end of that series. But investing a lot in scouting and investing a lot in international scouting and having a international scout who's got great skills, I think is, is you know, really honestly one of the few areas where you can really differentiate yourself. And an example of that is Robbie Luces, who was a scouting discovery of ours back at the end of October, now viewed the number 81 prospect in all of baseball. Third base prospect, um, not great defensively, but certainly looks like he could have a plus bat. And while you're going to always have kind of half star, one star, one and a half star potential players who you're scouts are going to be finding and adding into the international complex. When you invest a lot of money in your scouting budget and you have an international scout who's really good and you also have the slider turned up so a big chunk of that scouting budget is going to international scouting, you're going to find more players like Robbie Lou says who could potentially be a um, real contributor um, on top of the international amateur free agents who hopefully you're going to get some contributors from there. But again, that's something where every team gets a shot at them. The players who you find through just random scouting discoveries are an area where you can put the probabilities in your favor by investing more of your funds the way that I just suggested. All right, we're now just a few days away from the start of spring training. Going to check in on free agents that happen to be out there. Um, Santiago Suarez still out there, kind of the best reliever who's available. He is a guy that we know well from his time in Kansas City. Um, $13 million. Um, Definitely a lot for the Pirates to be spending on a reliever, and I don't really want to spend the last 10 that we have or open up some of the money that we've put into, at least for this season, scouting and development into a one-year rental. Um, I do think we should be pretty close to 500 this year. I think we've made some strides this offseason. 
but I don't think we're going to be competing for a playoff spot. And quite honestly, if we are competing for a playoff spot three or four months from now, I think I'd rather have that money available to take on multiple contracts of players that can fit very specific needs for us rather than putting it all into a closer right now. So going to pass on Suarez. Um, looking at the batters, um, you know, kind of a much smaller crew that's out there right now. Again, nobody that I feel we really need to chase after. Juan Soto still out there. He did not actually retire, still looking for a job. Um, led the league in walks between the Cubs and us last year, but that 168 batting average with four home runs and 184 at-bats, um, you would think that as a 40-year-old, he might take that as a sign to move on and start get the getting the clock ticking on your five years until you'll be in Cooperstown, but um, sometimes it's hard for people to let go. We are now going to go through and try to bolster our minor league system. You see a player like Carter Bins out there at 40 years old. Um, captain personality. He's not a um, you know major league player at this point, which is why he's out there. But to put a player like that in AAA, be a good influence on the guys around him, still a decent defensive catcher for our pitchers to work with. Um, we're definitely looking for some organizational depth right now. You know, you can look at our minor league teams. We've got 18 in Indianapolis, 19 in Altoona, 22 in Greensboro. So definitely going to need to be bringing on some players to bolster the minor league system. Um, prefer in a perfect world to be doing it with younger players, and that will certainly be our um, goal. But when you've got a player with a great personality like Bins, um, we're certainly going to make a minor league offer to him and many others um, today as we get ready for spring training. And it's been a pretty successful spring training for the Pirates. Uh, we've made it here to Monday, March 21st, so we're three days away from opening day. Uh, most importantly for the team, no real significant injuries at all during spring training. Had a couple guys banged up here and there, rested them as needed. Jose Jernigan, who's marginal to make the team at this point, um, you can see um, he's coming off of an injury since last year that he's still recovering from, and our scout views him as half a star player at this point. So um, that was a pretty, um, it was just shoulder inflammation but it seems to have had a uh, pretty pretty significant impact on his career potentially. So um, we'll certainly start him out in the year when he is healthy down in AA or AAA, give him a little um, time to see if maybe he's better than our scout thinks he is now. But the OSA is still, you know, a little more constructive on him. But his career may be overish, but... Um, you can see he was only on the major league team for nine games last year and was pretty ineffective with an 8.82 ERA over 16 and a third innings pitched. So not a guy that we were counting on to be on the major league roster anyways, but he's still rehabbing that injury. Um, other than that, though, everyone is relatively healthy, so we've just got to go through the decision-making behind um, getting from a 37-man spring training roster at this point, which started out in the mid-40s, and we've been culling people out every couple of weeks, send down the obvious guys who aren't going to make the team, hope that they got a little experience being around the major leaguers, and um, then we can kind of get a little more playing time for the guys who might actually make the final cuts, but i um, going to work on that right now. And we're getting to the points where we're going to make the final cut among our pitching staff. And uh, David Villalobos, who was the Rule 5 pick uh, we had from a season ago, spent the whole season at the Major League level. Um, he's got electric stuff. He struck out 95 and in 61 innings pitched, but did have a 4.72 ERA. Um, a little worried about his lack of movement and his lack of control. I don't know that that's magically going to fix itself, but given that he does have option years left, um, we are going to send him down to AAA to start the season. Uh, kept up Olivio Lantada, more of a balanced, very average-ish profile, but a good personality 
and he's also a 31 year old who's out of options right now um, so certainly wouldn't be averse to waving and DFAing Lantada at some point down the line uh, but he is on the roster as the season starts so feel good about the starting rotation uh, Tony Santana Bobby Gonzalez the big free agent acquisition and then Ricky Gotti, Marco Estrada, and Heriberto Rosales round out the top five. Uh, bullpen, Ernesto Moreno back as closer. Andy Ochoa is our setup man. And then Rodolfo Morales, who we made the trade from in a key middle relief role, along with former Rule 5 acquisition, Willie Arenales. Edgar Flores uh, moves into a middle relief role. He was a player who had been a um, starter for Pittsburgh, had some injury issues last year, split the year between AAA and Pittsburgh, and obviously spent a lot of the time on, on the IL as also. Um, his control and his movement are really not incredible as we've gotten to scout him a little better. So we're going to see if um, maybe he can thrive in a bullpen role. Lantada, who we talked about, is a long reliever. Uh, Tony Owens the extremely popular and extremely average um, fan favorite back for probably a final year with us. Um, don't know that we want to be spending $1.8 million on him next year, um, but he is in a long relief role. And then Omer Ganoa is our lefty specialist and certainly a player who could plug into the starting rotation if and when um, we need him to. Actually, let me just check on Ganoa. Um, I have him forced into a relief role. I don't know that he would move into the rotation if I don't force him into that role, uh, but just want to see what this coaching staff wants to do. Yeah, and they still have Ganoa as a lefty specialist, so that's fine. Just wanted to give them as much freedom as possible. As we talked about when we made the trade, though, given that that third pitch um, is so weak for Morales. I'm not going to put him in the rotation right now. Certainly if we have injury issues with guys like Ganoa, Rodolfo Morales, Olivia Lantada around, you can see, you know, basically everyone in our bullpen has pretty good stamina. So we have a lot of people who could start for us if they needed to. And we've got a lot more decisions to make with the offense. Uh, you can see we've got 21 position players still on the team right now, so we've got to make eight cuts. Some of them are pretty obvious. Um, catcher, um, Adam Fuchs is going to be back as our starter. Uh, you may remember we picked up Carter Bins as a minor league free agent uh, a little over a month ago. Um, love the captain personality. Love the fact that he's going to draw some walks, even though he's probably going to hit on the interstate but um at 40 years old um ishmael heel is a better defensive catcher at this point and i think a more well-rounded offensive player although certainly not a great offensive player so we are going to sign send uh, carter bins down to indianapolis where hopefully he can help our pitching staff down there and be some organizational insurance if we do have any injury issues at the catcher position And this may be a bit of a controversial move, but we are going to send the right fielder, um, Andres Mendez, who's the number 42 prospect in baseball, back down to AAA. Um, you can see he's not in our starting lineup right now. We've got five outfielders ahead of him, or four who are in the starting in starting spots from time to time, and then Jordan Owens, who's great defensively. I want Mendez to get the at-bats to hopefully get his potential fully up to where it can be. Um, he hit 283 last year in AAA for us, but did not have a ton of power. Um, so probably not going to make him very happy, um, but think he needs a little more seasoning and want to make sure that he's getting to play every day. Um, and then other than that, you know, we're set with our two catchers. We are set with our five outfielders. Um, so we've got to cut five infielders. Um, you can see that we've got a lot of, um, you know, we know that Fonseca 
shortstop, Kager, Urquiza, and Peaches, all of whom we traded for, and Tony Cook, who was our lone all-star last year. Those five are all on the team, and you can see they're all in the starting lineup at times. So it's really just a matter of figuring who we want our sixth infielder to be among Edwin Pippin, Bill Aguayo, David Gallegos, Ethan Edwards, Laron Gillis, and Oscar Gomez. And Gomez is an easy um, send down. You'll remember he's the player we picked up in the Cubs at the beginning of picked up from the Cubs at the beginning of this episode. Um, great glove. The bat is questionable. Still needs some work. So although he's played in the majors for the last season plus with the Cubs, we are going to try to give him a little more seasoning down in AAA to um, hopefully um, you know round out his offensive ability so that if and when we do have him up in the future because of that great glove hopefully he'll be a little more ready to contribute with the bat as well edwin pippen was reasonably good in triple a last year 27 homers 254 batting average 140 ops plus 146 wrc plus the power in terms of his bat certainly looks like it's ready for the major league level not really going to contribute much defensively though and think that we want our sixth infielder to be someone who's a little more versatile in terms of actually being able to back up in the infield so we are going to send him back down to triple a as he's got options left as well which leaves us with three more cuts to make among aguayo gallegos edwards and gillis And looking at those four players, Aguayo spent all of last year in AAA, hit just 209. The bat is obviously the concern with him. Um, very good and versatile defensive player, good personality. So certainly someone who is going to be in the mix for that uh, final spot in our infield. David Gallegos is actually kind of similar. Um, he made it last year, um, honestly instead of Aguayo, um, and did hit 237 at the major league level. The bat here is definitely better, um, definitely not as versatile defensively and not as good defensively, also has a good personality. Um, given that we have upgraded the infield decently with Urquiza, Kager, and Peaches being added to the team and all having, um, you know, decent defensive versatility and decent defensive skills, probably leans towards keeping the left-handed bat of Gallegos off the bench. Um, don't know if he's going to make the team, but definitely want him over Aguayo. So unfortunately, Aguayo going back down. Ooh, and Aguayo unfortunately doesn't have any options left, but um, it is what it is. Um, we are going to wave in DFA Aguayo. Hopefully he'll make it through waivers. Um, so Gallegos left-handed bat definitely works in his favor because you can see um, at this point we've just got Ignacio Carvajal and Tony Fonseca as left-handed bats in the lineup. Laron Gillis, a switch hitter, is also in the mix for um, that final position on the team. He's better defensively, um, but he's also someone who only knows how to play shortstop right now. Um, not as good a bat. Um, we're going to send him down, hopefully force start him at second or third down in AAA this year, get him a little more defensive versatility. Um, and then Ethan Edwards is the last option. This is a guy who um, we made as a minor league free agent signing about a month ago, really just organizational depth, good work ethic, um, more versatile defensively. But again, not as much as a bat, given that he's 34 years old and he hits right-handed. Um, he's organizational depth for us at this point, so we're going to send him down to AAA. And that gives us our 13-man roster. Gallegos, largely because of the better bat and because he's a lefty, survived. Um, definitely not as versatile defensively as some of the as any of the other players that we were thinking about, quite honestly. But again, given that we've got Peaches who can play first, second, and third that we've added this offseason. We've got Urquiza, 
who can play second, third, and short that we added this offseason. And we've got Kager, who can play second, third, and short um, that we added this offseason. Felt like um, keeping the better bat of Gallegos and the left-handed bat of Gallegos made sense for the final spot on the roster. Uh, Isaiah Hill... The, at this point, number six prospect in baseball um, didn't do much in his little uh, stint in AAA last year, but with the good coaching that we have at the major league level, I'm going to let him learn on the job at the age of 23 this year. He is going to be our starting right fielder and batting third for us. And then Sergio Uribe, Rule 5 draft pick. You may remember we traded away one of our Rule 5 draft picks earlier this offseason. Uh, Uribe, the other Rule 5 draft pick we made last December. He is going to make the team um, like his bat, um, like the fact that he's got a little speed. He's versatile defensively, can play any outfield position, although clearly he's uh, most experienced as a left fielder. And Uribe is going to be um, our starting left fielder and our cleanup hitter against left-handed pitching. Uh, Chris Gomez is going to be our starting left fielder against right-handed pitching, also pretty versatile defensively um, player who was up with the team last year. You can see, um, you know, the dearth of left-handed batters that we have does does put us in the unique situation where we've got a. Um, right-handed batter is um, part of our platoon against right-handers and then obviously another right-handed batter in your rebate is part of the left field platoon against left-handers um, which makes a little more sense but it is what it is so clearly as the season moves along um, adding another left-handed bat into our lineup somewhere could be something that we look to do always going to be interested in potentially bringing on more pitching but I think, you know, this team can be close to 500. Um, fan interest is up to 63, which is positive. Um, you can see we're selling more season tickets than we did last year, which is positive. Expected to improve revenue per game by over $100,000 if these projections are correct, which would be um, not meaningless. You know, that's going to mean over $8 million extra dollars potentially going into the budget next year if... Uh, Mr. Nutting is willing to share some of that with us, but uh, still have the lowest budget in baseball right now, still have the lowest payroll in baseball, but I think we can compete for playing close to 500 ball with this team. Um, we do have money, um, as I talked about, if we want to add some players down the line, particularly a left-handed bat, get some players with an expiring contract. We've got a real big investment for Pittsburgh, particularly into scouting and development right now. That is something that unfortunately we may need to pare back a bit going forward when we feel like we've got a team that can potentially compete at the major league level. And when some of these younger players that are heading into salary arbitration start making more and more money, uh, probably we'll need to open up some money then. Um, but we had a good spring, 16 and seven with five save, uh, five ties for what for what that's worth. And I know that uh, spring training records can be um, very misleading. But let's take a look. Like I said, I think I think we can be fighting for 500 with this team this year, which would be pretty good progress from a 55 win team in 2037 to maybe a 500 team this year. But what does out-of-the-park baseball think this team looks like? Um, and again, other teams probably haven't made all their final cuts yet, so sometimes you can get some weird responses. Ooh, look at our buddies in Kansas City. They're not, uh, not projected to win the AL Central. Um, so it seems like they might be heading in a uh, less constructive direction. But we care about the Pirates now. Ooh. And they don't like us. They're saying we're going to be 70 and 92, which would actually be two games worse than we were a year ago. Um, I think the Pirates are being underestimated. Um, we'll see. Um, you can see our rookie Isaiah Hill projected to hit 295 with 40 home runs, 97 ribbies, 22 stolen bases through that simulation. I would certainly take that rookie season for Mr. Hill if he's able to put that up. 
not projected to have any of the top pitchers in this simulation. We'll obviously run it again three days from now at the start of our next episode when we really dig into the season and um, all of the other teams have really kind of finalized their 26-man rosters because sometimes it can look different because of that and then obviously it's going to always look different because it's just another uh, simulation of the season that we go through but um i think we're a better team than the experts do i think we can definitely push 500 with this team this year and um, we've got money to help us do that if uh, we need to so looking forward to the 2039 season in our next episode until then thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day